I would like to welcome distinguished department chairs, guests, our distinguished graduates, our family and friends. I'd like to formally welcome you to the 2018 School of Engineering Graduate Program Ceremony. Please help me in welcoming the candidates for the degrees of Doctor of Philosophy, Master of Science in Engineering Management, Master of Science in Innovation and Management, Master of Science, and Master of Engineering. You have to be tenacious and work hard, and work really hard. If you are sitting here today with regalia on, you know what I'm talking about. Now all that hard work has paid off. You are about to graduate. You can tell yourself proudly that you have made it. Congratulations. Mark Twain said, 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do by, than by the ones you did. So throw off the bow lines, sail away from safe harbor, catch the trade winds in your sails, explore, dream, discover. Thank you very much and congratulations Tufts Graduate School of Engineering Class of 2018. Relish every twist, turn, bump and detour in the journey that lies before you. And appreciate all people that crossed your path. Thank you. On behalf of the Board of Trustees of Tufts University and the faculty of the School of Engineering, I now pronounce this ceremony concludes. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. It's my pleasure to want welcome you here to Tufts University to our School of Engineering graduate ceremony. I'm Dean Karen Panetta, and it has been my honor to work with your future graduates. I would like to welcome distinguished department chairs, guests, our distinguished graduates, our family and friends, I'd like to formally welcome you to the 2018 School of Engineering Graduate Program Ceremony. Please help me in welcoming the candidates for the degrees of Doctor of Philosophy, Master of Science in Engineering Management, Master of Science in Innovation and Management, Master of Science, and Master of Engineering.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Welcome. It is my distinct honor to introduce you to Dean Jim Min Q, School of Engineering.
Thank you, Dean Peranda. Good morning, everyone. Let's try that again. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Um, welcome to the 2018 Engineering Graduate Programs Ceremony. We are here today to recognize and celebrate those who are graduating with Masters of Science, Master of Engineering, and Doctor of Philosophy degrees. This ceremony symbolizes the completion of the candidate's passage from being a student to being masters of their respective disciplines. The road to graduate degrees is long and often arduous. You have to be curious and continuously pushing yourself to new heights. You have to be perseverance and be willing to accept failure and start all over again when that happens. And more importantly, you have to be tenacious and work hard, and work really hard. If you are sitting here today with regalia on, you know what I'm talking about. Now, all that hard work has paid off. You are about to graduate. You can tell yourself proudly that you have made it. Congratulations. In this happy moment, let us not forget how we got here. Let us extend our sincere gratitude and appreciation to those who have made today possible. Can I ask the parents and guardians to stand up and be recognized? How about the rest of the families, the grandparents, the spouses, children, sisters, uncles and aunts, all the family friends, stand up. Thank you for being part of our graduates' lives, your love, support, and encouragement have made a huge difference. You deserve a big round of applause from all of us. Without its faculty and the staff, a university is only a collection of empty buildings. It is the faculty who wave the curriculum into an education. It is the staff who manage the daily life of our campus. So I would like to ask the faculty and staff to stand up, be recognized for their contributions to the success of our graduates today. Please be seated. Back to the graduates. Earning a graduate degree is a transformative process. Your graduate studies enhance your ability to understand and solve problems, increase your confidence, and make you a better communicator and a lifelong learner. Through graduate studies, 
you have transformed yourself into a scholar of higher learning. Now, your stay at Tufts is coming to an end. I hope that you will enjoy your time here, and as you look back at your graduate student days, you will see them as a time of discovery and growth, a time in which you form lasting relationships that will support your personal and professional growth and development and continuous success throughout your career. Though you are leaving the Tufts campus, I hope that you will carry with you the lasting bonds that you have formed here and that you will remain connected to the larger Tufts community all around the world. Remember, this is not the end of a journey for you, but rather a beginning. We know that you're going on to bigger things, and we are proud and excited to see where your journey will take you. As you embark on your career, whether it is in academia, industry, or government, please know that you will always have a place in our hearts, and that you will always be part of the Tufts community. On that note, it is my pleasure to introduce you to our graduation speaker, Paula Satteropoulos. Paula is a Tufts alumna, earning her Bachelor's of Science and Master of Science degrees from the Department of Chemical and Biological Engineering. She's also a proud parent of a Tufts sophomore, Alexia. Unfortunately, she is not an engineer, but that, that we wouldn't hold against her. <laughs> Paula is the president and the CEO of Acacia Therapeutics, a global public biopharmaceutical company founded uh, focused on the development and commercialization of a transformative medicine for people living with rare and serious diseases. Headquartered right here in Cambridge, Axia works to unite, educate, and empower communities of rare disease patients across the world. Paula was Axia's founding CEO and first employee back in 19, oh, sorry, 2015, uh, way too far back. <laughs> she led the company through its initial public offering and significant growth. The company now employs more than 200 people in nine countries and has six drugs in its portfolio and is currently preparing for the approval and the launch of his first two therapies in the global market. Paula has been involved with a number of initiatives to support diversity in business and development of women's leadership, including the Healthcare Business Women's Association and Women Unlimited. She's also a past honoree of the Massachusetts High Technology Council's Women to Watch Award. Prior to funding Axia, Paula was a member of the executive leadership team for Moderna Therapeutics. She spent 21 years at Jinzen, uh, serving as a variety of roles with increasing responsibilities, from engineering and manufacturing to leading global commercial business. She served on the board of, doctor, board of directors of a gene therapy company, Unicure. She's also on the advisory board of our Department of Chemical and Biological Engineering. In addition to her degrees from Tufts, Paula holds an executive management certificate from the Darton School of Business at the University of Virginia. So please join me to welcome Paula Satteropoulos. Dean Q, distinguished members of the faculty, it's an honor to be here at Tufts University along with special guests, family members, and friends. 
And most of all, it's an honor to be here with all of you, the Tufts Graduate School of Engineering class of 2018. You made it. Another round of applause for you. such an important day. You, your families, your professors have all invested so much in each of you to prepare for this moment, a moment when you embark on the next stage of your journey. For the record, I have a very biased view about an engineering education. I truly believe it provides a strong foundation for any career and in any field of business. Engineers dream big, innovate, challenge the status quo, and make the world better. Engineers are entrepreneurs. We define problems, we ask questions, we find solutions, we learn early to work in teams, and we make decisions. I argue these are the key characteristics of any highly successful team member, researcher, educator, manager, or executive across any field. The skills you have gained throughout your engineering education lay the foundation for you to not only continue your career in engineering, but expand even beyond to so many fields, but especially in business and management. As a CEO, I'm confronted every day with a problem. I have to decipher multiple inputs and perspectives and help the team or organization find solutions and make decisions. During my time at Tufts, I discovered what was then in the 80s a burgeoning industry in its infancy, biotechnology. I was enamored with the possibility of new innovative approaches to engineer new medicines for diseases that prior were unaddressable by existing technologies. I spent many late nights and early mornings in the basement of um, Pearson, what was uh, then the biotechnology labs. I've Biotech um, labs have moved on since then, thankfully. Um, but then I was focused on my research with aspirations to impact, and even in a small way, the, the future of how innovative therapies would be developed and manufactured. And after I graduated from Tufts, I spent my first decade in engineering, specifically in the biotechnology field. And my career continued to branch out from engineering to leadership roles, um, ultimately running global businesses, developing and selling innovative therapies for patients um, that have high MET medical needs around the world. And three years ago, I had the opportunity as the founding CEO to start up um, a, and lead a new company, Exia Therapeutics, a um, company where we're focused on delivering and innovating therapies for rare, debilitating diseases. In that three years, we've grown from employee one to 200 employees in, in nine countries. Um, and I'm very excited about the possibility that we have uh, to, to bring forward innovative technologies to patients in need and, and really realize that, um, that dream that I had 30 years ago when I became enamored with biotechnology. My engineering foundation was very critical to my journey. I do what engineers are trained to do, dream big, innovate, challenge the status quo, and make a better world. And I have the opportunity to do that one patient at a time. And unknowingly to me, I've also been able to challenge the status quo and help begin to shift the leadership to statistics in business. In 1990, when I was in your seat, uh, only 22% of the engineering graduate recipients, masters and PhDs at Tufts were awarded to women. Approximately 45% of you, this graduating class, are women, compared to the national figures of only 25%. That's 45 versus 25%. I have to credit you. <laughs> um, last year, Tufts School of Engineering ranked fourth highest in the US News and World Report's ranking of number of women enrolled in engineering graduate programs. Um, it is very exciting to see Tufts' role in expanding opportunities for women in all engineering disciplines. And I'm proud to be an affiliate and current parent of this institution that has proven exemplary in terms of balance and diversity. It is quite an astounding statistic. Despite this improvement in gender diversity here at Tufts, there's still a long way regarding diversity in general, as I believe you will find when you leave this campus on the hill of Medford. I want you to take a moment and appreciate the diversity here at Tufts, not only gender, 
uh, but the, your graduating class hails from 27 different countries. The diversity of background, culture, and gender in the C-suite and on corporate boards has shown unequivocally in research to lead to increased revenue, more innovation, and strong company cultures. In the top 500 companies in the U.S., women only occupy 21% of board seats, and sadly, only 5% are CEOs. Last month, the Boston Business Journal named our company, Exia Therapeutics, as one of the fastest top-growing com public companies in 2017. Uh, granted, I was very proud to be sitting number one on that seat of 25 biotech and technology companies, but I was the only female CEO. We have a long way to go. We can do much better in technology companies, and this group will hopefully lead the way. We need leaders, both men and women, who lead through effectively engaging others and bringing the best in diverse thinking and approaches. I point this out to you because I do believe, again, this, is, this generation needs to have a greater impact on changing this fact. Let these statistics empower both genders to call you to action, to change the balance, to get more diversity in leadership, and to drive the future technologies across all industries. So how did I define the statistics? I didn't always have the confidence to do what hasn't been done before. It was the supporters around me, my husband most of all, and two memorable male mentors from my 20 years at Genzyme Corporation that helped me stop doubting myself. They had more confidence in me than I had in myself. My road to where I am today was not always perfect. There were lots of twists and turns, bumps and potholes, but there were a few factors that were most impactful for me. And I look back now and I can try to convey what I wish I knew when I was sitting in your seats, and I'll share three. But at the end of the day, I wouldn't change a thing. It's the failures, the challenges, the mistakes that make life rich. They allow us to course correct and know with great conviction what we don't want and what we do want. So if I distill it down, my top three are, one, don't fear failure. Two, embrace imperfection. And three, appreciate the value of connection. So starting with don't fear failure, make mistakes. Most of us hold back because we don't want to fail, we don't want to disappoint others. We all need to jump, leap, climb, scratch our knees and get muddy. It's the only way to see how far we can go, how high we can go, and to push ourselves beyond our self-imposed limits to discover what drives us, what we are passionate about, and where we can go. Innovation and transformation cannot happen if you are worried you will fail or if you will disappoint. When I was an engineer a couple years out of school, I was part of the design build team at Genzyme's most significant large-scale manufacturing plant for the company's flagship rare disease drug. During the initial startup of the facility, of this expansive facility that sits on the banks of the Charles River, one of the largest tanks in the support services systems imploded. And our vice president of engineering at the time came to me on the Friday when this happened um, and told me he wanted me to take over and lead the startup of this plant the following Monday. My initial reaction was impossible. I was two years out of school. I had no idea what to do. I couldn't lead this. Um, I didn't know what to do in terms of starting up a plant that had heating, cooling, uh, water systems, bioprocessing reactors, purification systems, and then what if another tank imploded under my watch? He gave me, however, the most important lesson. I needed to learn quickly to balance risks, gather all the information I could to make decisions, trust in myself, but also trust in the people around me who actually may know more than me. Importantly, he didn't tell me how to execute, but he told me the why. His words stuck with me even to this day. He said, every day that plant is not up and running. It's thousands of patients without a life-saving drug. These patients are depending on us. These patients are depending on you. It is the why that compelled me to take risks and to not fear failure. Losing the fear of failure opened me up to new opportunities. I took lateral moves not to be 
prescriptive in my path, ladder, or direction. My transition from engineering to the business side was driven by a drive to connect closer to the patients and the medicines that could help them. When, I, when there was a business problem, I jumped in. It's raising your hand when something needs to be done, a problem to be solved. Don't forget, you are engineers. You are wired to see a problem and solve it. Don't fear what you haven't done before. Accept that you may fail sometimes, and that's okay. Failing is the only way to learn and grow. And someday, if you are in a position to manage other people, do the same for them. Take risks on good people. Don't worry that they haven't done every aspect of a job before. Take, take risks on your people and encourage them to risk themselves, and your mutual growth will be exponential. Give them guidance, the tools to succeed, and get out of their way. Mistakes will happen. Mistakes and failure are the universe's way of nudging us in the right direction. Get out of your comfort zone and be open to the unexpected and relish what unfolds. So my number two is embrace imperfection. So early in my career, I felt I had to do it all myself. I had to prove my smarts, my value, my worth. I could handle the workload, balancing family and growing a career. At some point, that brings you to a breaking point. I had to learn to let go of perfection, to be okay with other people doing things in, in a way that was different from the way I would do things, whether that be at work or at home. It was okay that my husband bought the wrong brand of milk or dressed my then young daughter in clashing colors, or it was okay that an employee took longer to get to an answer that I could have just given them directly. Otherwise, we micromanage and stand still where we, were, where we are and never move on to take on new things. And by the way, I'm not only suggesting that your partner, coworker, employee be imperfect, you too. You don't have to be the smartest person in the room. It's okay to say, I don't know. This is an important point. If you want to grow, surround yourself with people who are smarter than you. It may be hard to do with this group, uh, but don't fear showing your vulnerability, asking for help, or saying you don't know. Give up your need to control everything. And this may be extremely hard for, for engineers who have been classically trained to calculate and control their environment. When you give up your need to control everything, you will make more room for the new, to innovate, and otherwise you will miss the unexpected opportunities, the coincidences, and the serendipity. So embrace imperfection in yourself and in others. And my last point, appreciate the value of connection. And I mean connection to everything. It's appreciating how much greater value can be created by connecting the perspectives of diverse viewpoints, as well as the power to innovate, change, and impact by making new connections in a new way. You have spent much of your education learning how science and, can, and technology can change the world, but technology alone isn't the solution. It's the power of the people you are connected with that will make such changes. Every person you encounter, in some way, whether profound or small, will impact you. With the greater use of social media, there's a risk that we forget the human aspect of interaction, connection, and listening, and many times, kindness. The greatest gift you can give to another at work, at home, on your personal time, in appreciation of their value and worth is being present and listening intently. So put the phone down and listen. Pick up the phone and talk rather than shooting off a text or email. The late CEO of Genzyme, who was an important mentor to me, Henry Tamir, was leading a multi-billion dollar com global company, but he always made time to walk around the building, stop, to sit down and connect with anyone in the organization, no matter what level, to hear how they were doing, what they were working on, what were the issues, how were their families. He appreciated that each individual was part of the whole. He learned so much by listening and had his hand on the pulse of a 10,000 person company. In return, each person felt heard, valued, and connected to his shared vision. In terms of appreciating novel connections, 
Tufts College of Engineering is a perfect example. Not all engineering schools put the emphasis that Tufts Engineering does on the interconnection between varied engineering disciplines as well as the interconnection with areas of the humanities and the impact on society, the environment, and the global community. Tufts is growing beyond the traditional disciplines of chemical, mechanical, civil, and electrical engineering. Tufts engineering research has driven the development of tools to improve medical diagnosis and treatment, not only through traditional biochemical and biomedical engineering processes, but through the innovation of novel materials and nanoparticles, interfacing biology and digital through cognitive science and computer science, and using biology and big data to mine the next generation of future medicines. This connection is something to really appreciate and take forward as you think about where you take your engineering education. How can you use the backdrop of diversity of your community the diversity of science, engineering, and the humanities to accelerate innovation on a global scale. So appreciate and invest in relationships and connections. Go beyond your circle and widen and diversify your community. Go beyond the engineering discipline that is written on your diplomas that you're about to receive and make those connections that will exponentially expand your ability to innovate and impact the world around you. On your journey to fulfill your purpose, don't fear what you haven't done before. Embrace imperfection and appreciate the value of connection. Nothing of value is achieved by taking the known and calculated path, nor without others to share in the success. Mark Twain said, 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do by, than by the ones you did. So throw off the bow lines, sail away from safe harbor, catch the trade winds in your sails, explore, dream, discover. Thank you very much and congratulations Tufts Graduate School of Engineering Class of 2018. Relish every twist, turn, bump and detour in the journey that lies before you. And appreciate all people that crossed your path. Thank you. Thank you, Paula, for your thoughtful and uplifting remarks, for sharing with us your professional wisdom and experience. So now I'd like to turn the ceremony back to Dean Panetta. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the presentation of degrees. Now, you know that Tufts engineers are the best at everything they do. However, we have not mastered the science and technology of teleportation. And to this point, the first thing we'd like to do is we'd like to invite Dr. David Goot to the stage because he needs to not only hood his PhD candidate today, but then he has to teleport himself over to Boston University to take care of his own daughter's graduation. So Dr. Goot, please join us on stage. I'd like to call Ms. Laura Corlin to the stage, please. Today, Laura will be hooded by both David Goot and Mark Wooden. Her dissertation title, Novel Methods for Assessing Exposures and Health Effects of Ultrafine Particles and Nitrogen Oxides. And I, I will read a little statement from her advisor. As an about-to-be triple jumbo, Laura Collin has always personified all the central qualities of the Tufts University community that it embodies. Her research not only displayed the highest level of scholarship, but in doing it, Laura it always involved underserved communities, her peers, and other students she was mentoring. It is a great privilege, Professor Mark Wooden and Dr. David Goot, to wish Laura the very best in her future life and career.
We shall now recognize the candidates for the degree of Master of Science in Engineering Management. Will the candidates please rise and proceed to the stage. Dean Q, I have the honor to present to you candidates for the degree of Master of Science in Engineering Management. I would like to ask that Mark Rinali, Executive Director and Associate Dean of the Tufts Gordon Institute, join me in congratulating the candidates. Then someone would come here. But there's no one here. Patrick John Roach. <laughs> Rahman Nabulse. Caroline Bujna. <laughs> Kaylee Dvorak. <laughs> Sarah Ernst. Christopher Smith. Soheeb Hassan. Megan M. French. Jorge Garcia. Catherine A. Banish. Douglas R. Runt. Matthew Damiano. Lindsay McCammer. Michael Salome. John Pazar. Robert B. Yamtov. Avi Smith. Kristen Monique Ransom. Vaishali Kulkarni. Robert Brennan. Christina Pan. Tara Grace Erickson. Kevin Hennessy. Amanda DiCatro. Diana Caballero.
Kay Chan. Bharat Arora. Nelly Ume. Justin Dick. Yuri Snitnikov. Brianna Bouchard. Taryn Connor. James Flattery. Brian J. Williams. Sanjay Konda. Jeremy J. Bebo. William Fedick. Justin Bonsukan Loader. Michael Sorensen. Brianna Mikolic. Yosef Bargash. John Quartz. Oh. Christopher M. Lukaj. Antonio A. Cruz, Jr. Ed Pengu. Chris Kasuli. Projakta da Morikar. Thomas Gamel. Stephanie Medici. Aaron Lynn Jaffke. Tim Gomringer. Rahik Hossein. Mariella Lizette Castillo. Kushbu Grover. Stacy Matrazo. Anga Ranga Rajan. Tian Tian Hue. Vinay Kalyani. Elliot Earn. Eric Potket. Jacob Rosenberg. Ani Nahyahir. K. 
Kendra Lee West. Gian Praya Tatia. Congratulations to our newly confirmed Master of Science in Innovation and Management graduates. We will now recognize the candidates for the degree of Master of Science and Master of Engineering. Will the candidates please rise and proceed to the stage? And I ask that Dean Q join me in congratulating the graduates. I'd like to ask the Department Chair of Electrical and Computer Engineering, Eric Miller, to announce our graduates from the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. Chu Shen Xia. Wei Chen Zhang, Hao Bai, Wei Sen Gang, Nate Woodsum, Aishwar Yu Yenkat, Wan King Chen. Chinyin Zhua, Keiyu Wang, Nikki Nyaki, Liz Fletcher, Deepak Surendran, Wenjin Zhang, Ziyi Zhong, Victor Ol Oludar. Hi, Victor. Kevin Ligonde. <laughs> Daniela Torres. <laughs> Stanley Normile. <laughs> Shinmon Lee. <laughs> ya Han. Thank you. Zhejing Lin, Shilpa Shiralaji, <laughs> Catherine Elizabeth Tiri, <laughs> Annalisa Westfield, <laughs> Azra Tanovich, <laughs> Stephanie Marie. Alumina. Peter Tsevis. Jonathan Nawer. Hao Lu. Shinyu Shear. Lei Hua. Ha Yang Yun, Andre Cleaver, Brooke Longo, Jishun Ganguli, Hi. William Palmtier, Shenzing Lu. Jahang Yu, 
Hua Yang Zhao, Zhao Lei Chen, Sean Smith, Adam Plumer, Wei Yan Yip. Congratulations. Christina Paupa. Mary Matthews. Dominic Jean Emelon, Emilian. Philippe Wow Alfonso Barroso. Noah Cooper. Sana Farouk. Guy DuPont. Sonal Chatter. Brett German. Marissa Helene Zelmer. Zachary Lowenstein. Ali Musa Iftikhar. Cole Springate Combs. Melissa J. Iori. Kimberly Hollett. Calvin Leong. Carrie Ann Mar Ali Lakita Marino. Benjamin Narji. Lucia Isabel Ramirez. Congratulations. Alexandra Trombley. Brianna Mignano. Maeve O'Sullivan. Alexandra R. Benbadis. Erica Genevieve Massaro. Gita Kiai. Yuki Wang. Sarah Armstrong. Wei Han Lee. Ing Han Ku. Xin Zhuan. Elena Borsenko. Parker Aubin. James Goodman. Mark Sablocki. Jordan Weinstein. Steen, Amanda Pari. Ron Jin. Tong Dong. Congratulations to our master's students. I'd now like to call upon Mark Rinali from the Gordon Institute. And I'd like to call to the stage the Masters of Science of Innovation and Management students receiving the master's degree today to the stage. Jin Chu Chang, <laughs> Timothy Savidaj, <laughs> Fan Chen, <laughs> Melek Ostutrok, <laughs> Adam Trach, <laughs> Rahul Rokit. Eileen Law, 
There is uh, Candida Libel. Yeah. Samuel Miller. Barton Lee Young. Zachary Zagger. Congratulations to our Masters of Innovation Management. We should now recognize the candidates for the combined degree program. These students will earn both a Master's of Science today as well as their Bachelor of Science today. Will the candidates please rise and proceed to the stage? Already got them? Okay. They, okay. We already did it. You, you want another degree? Come on up. <laughs> okay. Congratulations. <laughs> Will the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy begin to approach the stage to be joined by their respective faculty advisor as their name is called? Dean Q, I am pleased to certify that the candidates have completed all requirements for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy and have demonstrated by preparation of a written dissertation and by oral examination the sound and mature scholarship required of the recipients of this high degree. In the Department of Biomedical Engineering, we honor the following PhD graduates. Ashwin Sanda Krishnan, advisor, Dr. David Kaplan. Dissertation, engineered in in vitro models for studying pulmonary fibrosis and infectious disease. Traveled from Canada to the US in an academic BS degree, then to industry, and then back to academics to complete a PhD here at Tufts. Breathed new life into tissue engineered lungs with a new approach to study of fibrosis. Outstanding science and engineering with potential to help future disease treatments. On to Princeton for a postdoctoral fellowship. Congratulations. <laughs> Demetra Pooley, dissertation advisor, Dr. Irene Giacuti. Her dissertation, Nonlinear Label-Free Optical Imaging for Morphofunction Cellular and Tissue Diagnosis. Demetra is a true Renaissance woman. Throughout her doctoral studies, her background as a medical doctor and passion for art and photography were fully engaged and combined with her relentless curiosity and deep desire to conquer technological advantages with to improve the lives of patients. Her work has been featured in journals such as Science, Translational Medicine and Science, and is paving the way for transforming the way we detect the presence of early cancerous lesions in humans without the need for a biopsy. But rather than exploiting natural signals that are present in our tissues, her beautiful images have won multiple competitions, including the FASEB BioArt competition and our perfect reflection of her beautiful spirit, which will undoubtedly lead to great accomplishments and improvements for humanity. Congratulations. And just so you know, these, these, these descriptions of the candidate were written by the advisors themselves. So this is a great testament to the close relationship of our advisors with our candidates. Next, we have Kristen Javalakos, advisor, Dr. Sergio Fantini. Yeah. Dissertation title, Near Infrared Spectroscopy and Mathematical Modeling for Characterization of Human Cerebral Hemodynamics in the Microvascular. 
Kristen's dedication to research and discovery is exceptional and is matched by an equal passion for teaching and mentoring. Her quantitative studies of brain perfusion resulted in groundbreaking results, and under her research supervision, a high school, Medford High School student was awarded first place at the Massachusetts State Science and Engineering Fair. Kristen received the Outstanding Graduate Contributor to Engineering Education and is now a clinical research scientist at Phillips North America. Congratulations. <laughs> Lauren Ba, advisor, Dr. Lauren Black. Dissertation, the development of a novel model systems and imaging techniques to advance the understanding of calcific aortic valve disease. Lauren joined the lab initially as a master's student. Unsure of the fit between her undergraduate degree in aerospace engineering and her interest in biomedical en engineering would work. She, of course, just the, fit the lab just perfectly, led by a fellow rocket scientist by the same first name and quickly transitioned to the PhD program where she was immensely successful. Lauren recently started the next phase of her, her career, joining the lab of Doug Laufenberger at MIT, and the members of the lab in the BME department wish her continued success. Congratulations, Lauren. Nidshant Krishna Murthy, <laughs> advisor, Dr. Sergio Fantini. Dissertation title, using near-infrared spectrophoresis to study static and dynamic hemoglobin contrast associated with breast cancer. Nidshant's PhD research resulted in the design, construction, and characterization of a new instrument for optical mammography, which he used in the study on patients with breast cancer at the Tufts Medical Center to monitor individual response to chemotherapy. For his exceptional hardware and software development skills applied to the design of medical instrumentation, Nishant received the Graduate Award for Commitment to the Practice of Engineering. He is now a Senior Analyst at Health Advances. Congratulations, Nick. <laughs> Venkatesh Gopinarayan, Advisor, Dr. Nikhil Nair. Dissertation title, Regulon Engineering for Rapid Growth of Saccharomyces cerevisiae on the Non-Native Sugars. Ventacash was the first PhD candidate to join the Nair Lab and he's the first to graduate. A major part of his thesis was recently published in Nature Communication and has been received very well in the scientific community. Importantly, Venkatesh's work has laid the foundation for the work of several other researchers in the lab. In addition to being an excellent scientist and engineer, Venkatesh has been a very good citizen in the lab, always ready to help and train. He will be missed when he leaves the lab, but I am proud that he graduated from my group. Congratulations. In the Department of Chemical and Biological Engineering, we honor the following PhD graduates. Anthony D'Angelo, Dissertation Advisor, Dr. Matthew Panzer. Dissertation title, Influence of Polymer Scaffold Selection on the Properties of Conventional Insolvate Inaugural Electrolytes. Anthony came to Tufts in 2013 after completing both his bachelor's and master's degree in chemical engineering at the University of South Florida, and after working at NASA's Kennedy Space Center for one year in their materials science division. Anthony is a passionate, passionate researcher and entrepreneur who has contributed many new discoveries to the field of ionic liquid-based gel electrolytes and who co-founded his own company. Lithio Storage that won first place at the 2018 MIT Clean Energy Prize competition. His independent spirit and relentless drive in the laboratory have single-handedly made it possible for the Panzer Research Group to pursue novel materials for lithium-ion batteries, and his impact in the group will be felt for many years to come. Congratulations. Preeti Ashok, Dissertation Advisor, Dr. Sanakis. <laughs> dissertation title, Role of Exosomes in Cardiac Differentiation. Preeti, great work on your PhD research. Warmest wishes for a successful and prosperous career.
<laughs> Meenal Datta, dissertation advisors, Dr. Kiyoung Bung Lee and Dr. Rakesh Jain. Dissertation title, Overcoming Transport Barriers and Tuberculosis Granulomas and to Improve Drug, drug Delivery. I've had the good fortune of mentoring 45 PhD students from multiple disciplines, and Meenal is a star among them. During her graduate research in my laboratory, she has proven herself to be a thoughtful, intelligent, creative, hardworking researcher with great personal motivation and interpersonal skills, and the potential and desire to make seminal contributions. She is extremely passionate about applying fundamental concepts of engineering to biomedical and medical questions, and I am confident that in time she will become a leader at the interface of these disciplines. I wish her the very best. Congratulations. Jin Gao, dissertation advisor, Dr. David Kaplan. Dissertation title, Multiscale Design and Synthesis of Bio-Inspired Protein Mineral Systems. From China to the Mecca of college basketball, Syracuse and Central New York to complete the, a BS, an MS degree in BME, then here to Tufts for her PhD, developing novel biomaterials with gradient signals to regenerate bone cartilage tissue. Also contributed new 3D printing of silk ceramic biomaterials to improve bone repairs. She's an outstanding group member and contributing contributor with a bright future in research. Congratulations. <laughs> Papadia Kana, dissertation advisor, Dr. Ais Asakin. Dissertation title, Zwitter ionic copolymers for fouling resistant and responsive membranes. Papadier is an extremely independent researcher and excellent collaborator, a great mentor to other students and a very good presenter and writer. She excels in everything she does. In her thesis, Papadia developed several approaches to make membrane filters that resist fouling and clean their own surfaces. She is set to publish four first author papers based on this work. In addition, she has led several collaborative projects with other groups at Tufts and with teams at MIT, Carnegie Mellon University, and the Middle East Technical University in Turkey. I have no doubt that Papadia will be a very successful, whichever path she chooses, and look forward to watching her accomplishments. Congratulations. <laughs> Smitha. Krishnan, advisor, Dr. Kiong Bang Lee. Dissertation, gut microbiota metabolize, modulate inflammation in non-alcoholic fatty liver tissue disease. It has been a privilege to advise Smitha. She is a terrific scientist, even greater human being. She's also likely to be an awesome mother. I look forward to hearing about the exciting contribution she will make as a postdoc, an independent researcher, and president and CEO of her own company. <laughs> Jill Lee Liu, dissertation advisor, Dr. Maria Stephanopoulos. <laughs> dissertation. Platinum and palladium-based single atom alloy catalyst for selectric hydrogeneration and dehydration reactions. Jali, you are among the few people who strive for excellence and meet their goals with determination and hard work. While your significant technical achievements and your thesis make us all proud, it is your character and amenable personality that has made us all your friends for life. Best of luck as you move on to your professional career. Eileen Sadagi, advisor, Dr. Ais Asadakem. Dissertation, novel approaches for manufacturing membranes with controlled selectivity. Eileen is an incredible, passionate, productive, and creative researcher. She truly thrives on exploring new projects, solving problems, and discovering underlying phenomena. In addition to tackling her core project, which aims to develop membranes that can perform molecular separations, Eileen took on two additional projects, one of which led to a brand new approach for manufacturing membranes. She is set to publish six first author papers based on her thesis and recently received the Tufts School of Engineering Award for Outstanding Academic Scholarship. I look forward to seeing all the exciting things in Eileen's future that she invents. Congratulations.
In the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering, we honor the following PhD graduates. Tanya Alakon, advisor, Dr. Elena Namova. Dissertation title, A Systematic Approach to Time Series Analysis of Climate Sensitive Diseases. It was a true joy to work with Tanya throughout our time. She has succeeded as a stellar student in each class and as a teaching and research assistant, trusted leader, friend and colleague, and the first president of the Tufts Student Chapter of American Statistical Association. Her doctoral work on developing tools for time series analysis is already a valuable guide for many research projects, and its value will continue to grow. Congratulations. Nathan Davis, advisor, Dr. Masood Sanai. <laughs> Dissertation title, Assessment of Bridge Foundation for Reuse. Nate, I am proud of your enormous progress during your doctoral studies at Tufts. You have developed great technical abilities in bridge engineering, writing comprehensive reports and journal articles, as well as making fantastic presentations. Best of luck in your future endeavors. I will miss you as a colleague at Tufts. Tyler Marset, Dissertation Advisor, Dr. Natalie Capiro. Dissertation title is Coupling Thermal Treatment in Microbial Reductive Dechlorination and Enhanced Remediation of Chlorinated Ethenes. Tyler, as a graduate student, I was given the advice to pick my first PhD students very wisely because many of these relationships last longer than most marriages. <laughs> and they would help shape my career. I think I made the right choice. We have learned so much from each other beyond just research and developed a friendship based on mutual respect that I hope will last for many years. You have grown into an independent thinker and researcher that re readily questions me, usually with a valid argument. And I wish you all the best in your future endeavors. I know you will make great contributions in any field you pursue. Congratulations. <laughs> Michael Ritter. Advisor, Dr. Danielle Lantain. Dissertation title, Multi-Stakeholder Optimization of Preventative Health Programs, Evidence from Randomized Experiments on Marketing Strategies for Household Chlorination in Haiti. Michael came to Tufts after spending eight years living in Haiti working on safe drinking water with a desire to understand how to most effectively distribute and market safe water solutions in Haiti. In his PhD, Michael analyzed data he collected in Haiti and developed recommendations to balance health impact and cost effectiveness of different safe water solution distribution strategies. This research will allow safe water projects in Haiti to reach more people at lower cost, improving their efficiency. Congratulations. In the Department of Computer Science, we honor the following PhD graduates. Michael Shar, advisor, Dr. Sam Geyer. <laughs> Dissertation title, Understanding and Tuning the Performance of Synchronized Methods in Java with Program Analysis and Software Visualization Tools. Mike was one of a rare breed of PhD students, full of interesting research ideas, but also deeply committed to the craft of teaching and helping others. He works tirelessly with an unusual level of organization initiative. On top of it, he always shows up with a smile and a great attitude. Congratulations, Mike. This is well deserved. <laughs> Nirda Hassanapur, advisor, Dr. Sohar Hassoun. Dissertation title, Computational Methods to Advance Directed Evolution of Enzymes and Metabolics Data Analysis. N Nirda solved some challenging problems in analyzing data collected through untargeted metabolics. Nader has always been a joy to work with, and she will always be missed. Congratulations. In the Department of Electrical Engineering, we honor the follow -ph following PhD graduates. Bo Fan, advisor Dr. Xu Chen Aron, Dissertation title, Exploiting Correlation Structures for Geoscience. <laughs> Bo, your hard work and perseverance has been impressive. It's because of this you have been able to work on many different projects successfully. Good luck to you and your future endeavors. <laughs> Dr. 
Gao Ching Fu, advisor, Dr. Samir Sankaseli. Dissertation title, a CMOS luminescence sensor for intensity in lifetime dual sensing. During his PhD, Guan Jing Fu designed several single chip images for low light imaging applications. Jing Kang has this amazing sunny positive outlook. He is always there to lend a helping hand. We will miss him. We are proud that Jing Kang is working at Qualcomm in the Boston area as a senior design engineer. Congratulations. <laughs> Nicole Feaster Latham, dissertation advisor, Dr. Thomas Vandervelde. <laughs> dissertation title, Metamaterial Devices for the Enhancement of Thermophotovoltaics in Mid-IR Detectors. Nicole is an NSF graduate research fellow, a Tufts Future Leaders and STEM fellow, and the first student in the Tufts to receive a joint PhD in electrical engineering and material science and engineering. Her material, her metamaterial research performed in the Renewable Energy and Applied Photonics Lab has been published by in prestigious journals and at conferences around the world. Beyond her research success, she was also a great instructor and mentor for undergraduates and junior grad students, both in the lab and in the classroom, winning a teaching award for her efforts. She plans to continue her passion for high-end research and teaching opportunities after completing her fellowship this summer. Congratulations, Nicole. <laughs> Abigail Lick. Advisors, Dr. Thomas Vandervelde. Dissertation title, Extending the Cutoff Wavelength of Thermophotovoltaic Devices via Band Structure Engineering. Abby is an NSF Graduate Fellow, Research Fellow, and a Tufts Future Leaders in STEM Fellow, an NSF GROW Fellow, and a Charter Briand Fellow. For the last two fellowships, she suffered the better part of the two years in the French Riviera at the Institut de l'Electronique de Sault in the University of Montpelier. Her dedication to and love of the research she performed in the Renewable Energy and Applied Photonics Lab was only ever matched by her insatiable appetite for candy. <laughs> over her graduate career, mountains of candy wrappers, she presented her research at conferences all over Europe and North America, but a world traveler has come home and is now working in a permanent position at MIT Lincoln Laboratory. Congratulations, Abby. Tao Sun, advisor, Dr. Eric Miller. Dissertation title, Cavitation Control and Imaging for Focused Ultrasound Brain Therapy. Coming to Tufts with a background in acoustics, he's completed his PhD on a project supported by Dr. Nathan McDonald at Boston's Brigham and Williams Hospital, developing methods for controlling and monitoring the use of high-intensity focused ultrasound as a means of opening the blood-brain matter barrier for treatment of neurological diseases. Tao is truly an exceptional researcher, combining impressive skills as a benchtop scientist with strong theoretical and computational expertise. It has been a pleasure for me to learn from him over the past few years. Congratulations. <laughs> Clifford Yoon, dissertation advisor, Dr. Alexander Stankovich. Dissertation title, Information Geometry Model Reduction in Power Systems. Your advisor has sent you the note saying, Dear Cliff, congratulations. Just keep up your hard work and cheery disposition. Best of luck. Today he is hooded by Department Chair of the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department, Dr. Eric Miller. In the Department of Mechanical Engineering, we honor the following PhD graduates. Jessica Swenson, dissertation advisor, Dr. Kristen Wendell. <laughs> Developing knowledge in engineering science courses, sense making in epistemologies and undergraduate mechanical engineering homework sessions. Jess's doctoral work on the dynamics of homework sessions and engineering science courses sheds new light on student learning outcomes and makes an important contribution to the field of engineering education research. While independently conducting her dissertation studies, Jess was also instrumental to the success of our community-based engineering program for early career teachers, and she made countless contributions to graduate life in the mechanical engineering department and the STEM education program at Tufts. Congratulations, Jess. Nicholas Castor, 
Dissertation advisor is Robert White, hooded today by Dr. Barry Trimmer. Dissertation title, Design Manufacturing Control for, of Soft Foam Robots. Nicholas has been an outstanding member of the Mechanical Engineering Department in the Sof Soft Robots Research Group at Tufts. His work on soft foam robot manufacturing and control opens up possibilities for a new class of robotic systems that can interact safely with people in their environment. Nico excelled as both a National Science Foundation Soft Materials Robot IGERT Fellow and as a teaching assistant in the department. Nico, it has been a truly a pleasure. Congratulations. Vikrant Kalapathy, Dissertation Advisor Igor Sokolov. Dissertation title, Self-Assembly Nanoporous Silica Particles for Tagging and Sensing Applications. Vivek was an outstanding PhD student who demonstrated a deep understanding of topics in multiple disciplines, self-assembly, nanomechanics, nanophotonics. He has 10 papers published in top journals which have been already been cited in about 400 times, four more manuscripts currently submitted and in preparation. He gave seven conference presentations, one patent pending. He is co-inventor of the ultra-bright fluorescent nanothermometers. In addition, Vivek always is ready to help others, has been instrumental in assisting newcomers in our research grab. Congratulations. Did everybody get their hood? Yes? Congratulations. Congratulations to all our newly confirmed PhD graduates. When you matriculated several years ago at orientation, I stood up and promised you that it would be a wonderful experience for you, and I hope that we have met your expectations. It is now my honor to introduce again Dean Q, who will conclude today's ceremonies. Please remain seated until the platform party has departed the stage and the graduates have completed the recessional. Then you are welcome to join us in the rear of the, tent, uh, of the, of the, the gym there for our celebratory reception. Please note that tomorrow's graduation ceremonies of the all-university commencement, you are all most certainly welcome to attend, but please note that you will not have your name called again. You, this, this, this was your graduation today. So, so just so you know that, okay? So, uh, Dean Q, will you please join us in concluding the ceremonies? Thank you, Dean Panada. Congratulations again to all the graduates. On behalf of the faculty of the School of Engineering, I welcome all of you to join the community of scholars. Please be sure to join our community in a more literal sense as well. The Tufts Alumni Association includes more than 100,000 members worldwide and that will connect you with the fellow Jumbos and help you network with the alumni in your field and inform you about upcoming events in your area. I encourage you to become a member of the Alumni Association in your local chapter. It's time to go out and continue to build a life of your own. It has been a pleasure and privilege to share this special moment with you. I wish, I wish you much happiness, fulfillment, and success as you embark on your chosen path. 
You may be leaving the Medford and the Somerville campus, but the Tufts and the bonds you build here will stay with you for the rest of your life. Remember, once a jumbo, always a jumbo. So, on behalf of the Board of Trustees of Tufts University and the faculty of the School of Engineering, I now pronounce this ceremony concludes. Thank you. Thank you.